Let's continue with the urinary system and in this video we will be focusing on the nephrotic syndrome and hypertension as it relates to the kidney disease. Okay, so let's start with the nephrotic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome is a cluster of symptoms caused by excessive protein loss in the urine that indicate kidney damage, also called nephrosis. This condition is characterized by, as I said, cluster of symptoms. You have a low serum albumin, elevated cholesterol, massive protein urea, edema. Those are the frequently seen symptoms in this disease. The syndrome may occur in association with glomerulonephritis, diabetic kidney disease, lupus, allergic reactions and other orders like this. There are data to suggest that the prognosis is better for children than the adults. So let's take a close look at the symptoms. So you may have a large amount of protein in the urine, albumin, low amount of albumin in the blood, too much plaque, fat, cholesterol, hyperlipidemia or swelling, edema, anywhere. That's typical when it comes to nephrotic syndrome. So what happens and why these symptoms? Because the kidney that is supposed to receive the blood, filter it and then send back the purified blood to the entire body that is not happening, the tiny filters in the kidney the glomeruli are not functioning as they should and that results in all those symptoms and that's what this is all about and that may lead to uh, having excess fluid in the body, uh, swelling and all that and because the waste products remain and that causes the problem. So, in nephrotic syndrome, the damaged glomeruli or the tiny filters allow 3 grams or more of the protein to leak into the urine when measured over a 24 hour period which is more than 20 times the amount that healthy glomeruli allow. So, that explains why you end up having this nephrotic syndrome. And that can be caused by diseases that affect only the kidneys such as FSGS or focal segmental glomerulose sclerosis or membranous nephropathy. Diseases that affect only the kidneys are called primary causes of nephrotic syndrome. The glomeruli are usually the targets of these diseases for reasons that is yet to be understood. Okay? And we have many diseases where doctors would say that the cause is unclear, right? So in this FSGS, the most common primary cause of nephrotic syndrome, scar tissue forms in part of the glomeruli. In membranous nephropathy, immune molecules form harmful deposits on the glomeruli or the tiny filters. The nephrotic syndrome can occur, can also be caused by systemic diseases which are diseases that affect many parts of the body such as diabetes or lupus. Systemic diseases that affect the kidneys are called secondary causes of nephrotic syndrome and there are data to support that more than 50% of nephrotic syndrome cases in adults have secondary causes with diabetes being the most common. So, see the correlation between the diabetes and the nephrotic syndrome. So, besides the symptoms that we already discussed, what are the other possible signs and symptoms that one may have if one has been diagnosed with or is unfortunately having this nephrotic syndrome? Fatigue, weight gain, loss of appetite, Forming urine are frequently seen. 
the loss of protein because the filtering doesn't happen the way it should so the, there are some proteins that is needed that is required if that is unfortunately lost then it may end up the patient having a blood clot why because the protein that prevents uh, blood to form the clot clot are, are leaking and hence you may end up having a blood clot or just like your immune system weakens why because that needed protein is wasted things like that and that can lead to the variety of infections inflammation lung infection pneumonia meningitis you name it Medications given to treat the nephrotic syndrome can also increase the risk of this infection, side effect of medication. Other complications of nephrotic syndrome include acute kidney injury, so you may have a sudden and temporary loss of kidney function, um, high blood pressure or hypothyroidism, um, the thyroid gland releases or produce uh, the thyroid hormone, you can have a hypo or hyper underactive or overactive. Other complications of nephrotic syndrome because we reviewed multiple times when kidney is not filtered in the way it should and sending the semi-purified blood that goes throughout your body that it can cause uh, anemia, uh, coronary artery disease, right? That we have already reviewed before. So the treatment includes addressing the underlying cause as well as taking steps to reduce high blood pressure, edema, high cholesterol, risk of infection, makes sense right? And the doctor would start with change your diet, watch your diet and the appropriate medication to address these issues. Let's move on to the another important aspect of what is called hypertension and kidney disease as it relates to the urinary system. So the severe and persistent hypertension causes damage to many organs, especially the heart, the kidneys and the brain. And hypertension, you may have it primary or secondary. Secondary hypertension results from some non-systemic disorder other cause of uh, secondary hypertension could be the renal artery disease. Uh, you may have a plaque uh, and we will have a subsequent video to address this in detail. Um, what happens here is if you recall that renin is the enzyme uh, that kidney working with the brain and the spinal cord tries to release and it controls the blood pressure or the hypertension. And when there is a, a but damage to the kidney, say for example you have a renal artery stenosis or narrowing of the renal artery, right? Or the blockage or the obstruction. So the renin that is being released by the kidney, because kidney is already impaired, already damaged, not functioning properly, it may further worsen the amount of uh, pressure that we have to have and it may lead to the high blood pressure or the hypertension. So that is what this is about. And uh, there is a procedure the doctor may do to uh, figure out the exact location and the degree of the narrowing of the renal artery stenosis and all that. So uh, what what you think would be the signs of uh, kidney damage that may arise because of the high blood pressure? It can be protein in the urine, blood in the urine, cast in the urine, right? So, and of course the effects of the hypertension has to do with the severity of the disorder. Unless this severe hypertension is lowered by medication, unfortunate renal failure may occur. And there are data to suggest that over 90% over 90% of untreated renal patients die within 2 years of onset of hypertensive nephropathy. Okay, 
So hypertension caused by renal disease that affects only one kidney is occasionally treated surgically and may arrest the progression of this potentially life shortening condition. So that's all I have on this video. We have a lot to cover. I will be back soon with another aspect of the urinary system. Until then, see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.